بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته This is our final talk and building on the previous talks and talking on the distinction between the body and the spirit. Now in the last talk we stated that humanity is on the cusp of spiritual awakening. However, it is not fully there in the sense that humanity is awakening to this deep-seated need to find itself. But it's asking the question as to what is out there. There has to be something much deeper. There has to be a greater meaning. But it hasn't stepped upon that greater meaning yet. It knows it is not the body or the bodily, the discrimination. It knows, it's got a glimpse that it is something quite profound. The very fact that we find all these millennials and Generation Zs that come on social media and a lot of them are our Jewish community and who are saying, look, we do not support the barbaric actions of Zionists or Israel. People of every religion are awakening to a calling deeper than religion. However, the thing is that the deepest sense of spiritual awakening cannot come through asking this question merely. It can only come through being directed fully to our true self, which in this instance I will say God, the beautiful author that awaits our reception. You see, the real thing within us is not us. It is He, the Divine and the Beautiful. We are not even after finding ourselves or our true calling or our true existence. The whole question is for the truth to find itself, for a drop of stray water to re-immerse itself within the ocean. To find itself does not mean I find myself, but it means the beauty reclaims itself. Now, how can that be done? It cannot be done by me reaching out to God in a state of fear, because that is bodily, nor in a state of want, for that is bodily. The only way the spirit can find itself is when it stops being its own false self. So in the, in the final stages, what we have to understand is that as we make a distinction between body and spirit, we have to finally come to this level of relieving ourselves from ourselves. As we stop being ourselves, the final veils are parted and the beauty dormant within us emerges and culminates into its own self. It is here that we need God as that beautiful, perfect self for us to direct ourselves to. And the secret is in this direction and this is where religions are indispensable. Not every aspect of religion, the essential aspect of religion, which is devotion. Devotion is not the devotion of the body where we prostrate or the devotion of the mind where we think of the higher self in terms of virtues and morality. Devotion is a process of removal of the false self. I am devoted to you to the extent that I do not see myself, I see only you. That is the meaning of devotion, to be devoted to God, who is the direction and our perfect, untarnished splendor. And as we devote, we take away the wrapping from the self. The wrapping is our ego. Our ego is our identity. Our identity is generated through body orientation. 
even our spiritual identity is infected with bodily and the notions of the bodily. Devotion means I am giving myself over. Now, how does that happen in practical terms? When we are fearful, at the initial stages we say, O oh Lord, you are the utmost authority. With your presence, why should I fear other than you? At the next level, we say, O oh Lord, if you have destined loss for me, then allow me not to fear this loss or reach out to you to change destiny. Rather, allow me to accept and bear this loss because it is destined from you. Here, our devotion to God has gone a notch higher. Then we awaken to another stage and we say, O oh Lord, this loss that you're giving to me is actually a gift. Allow me to wholesomely embrace it because through this loss, I'm going to be relieved of my false self and I'm going to find my true self. Then we go beyond it. And when loss and danger are prescribed, we stand there thanking God and smiling that thank you for taking away the falsities from me. And that is how the spirit emerges through devotion by the fading away of the false identity, where we come to the level of Imam Hussein, where he says to Allah, O Lord, allow me not to plead to you for the postponement of a destiny that you have chosen to hasten, or for the hastening of a destiny that you have chosen to delay. Come to that state of neutrality with God and look at how wonderfully it works that when God sends enemies, we bear, then we learn to forgive, then we learn to thank God, and then we learn to rejoice and thank our enemies and pray for them, that you are not what you think you are. You are divine gifts bestowed by God for a facet of my ego to be awoken that gets offended and angry and enraged. And through that, I'm able to recognize the falsities that are wrapping the beauty untarnished. It was only through you that I've recognized them. And now I'm able to remove them until we come to a point where like Imam Hussein, if horror comes to you, there is no hesitation in the soul. Hussein embraces him and says, my brother, not only I, our Lord has forgiven you to that level of the soul. When wealth is snatched away from us, we bear, then we accept, then we rejoice, and then we find our true calling. As Imam Hussein says in his Dua Arafah, O oh Lord, you fashioned me in the womb of my mother, when I was unworthy of mention. You brought me to this world when I did not know what is the meaning of sustenance, yet it was prepared for me wholesomely within the being of my mother. O oh Lord, before the knees arose, you had already seen to it throughout my life. O oh Lord, is it possible that you keep me alive for another day and you would not see to my needs in that new day? When you have looked after me so well in my yesterday, when I was a non-entity, shall you abandon me in my tomorrow if you destine my tomorrow? So we begin to lose ourselves in a very, very directed manner. What we find is, in place of the ego traits of greed, insecurity, fear, rage, anger, lust, 
we find godly attributes starting to emerge. As the ego starts losing itself, and the truth starts reclaiming itself, and we begin to mirror our perfect self. In place of anger, there is clemency. In place of unforgiveness, there is compassion. In place of insecurity, there is security. Fear, fearlessness. In place of greed, there is generosity. And the self begins to understand that it is the entirety of the entirety. And it lacks nothing. When it finds itself, what does it lack? As Hussein says, O Lord, what has he lost, the one who has found you? And what has he found, the one who has lost you? So finally, in this blessed month of Ramadan, we need to turn inwardly in utmost surrender to the Splendid One and give ourselves over to Him without worry of gain and loss and just the understanding that as we draw nearer to Him, then that is the only truth for which we are here. And finally, to lose ourselves in the Blessed One. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.